Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Testing. Let's switch this off. All right, so we've started. Uh, we're starting the webinar. We're preparing. Just Hello? Can you hear me? Okay, got to switch this off as well. Um, yep, yeah, just preparing the webinar, waiting for everybody to log in. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, can you hear me? Can you? hear me talking, uh, say, <laughs> awesome, awesome. I'll take it as a yes, Everybody's saying yes. Um, all right, so I've got all my screens uh, running here. We've got 41 people online. We're gonna wait a couple more minutes uh, for everybody um, uh, to come in. And um, yeah, hi, Nitin, thank you. Uh, Nitin's from India and lots of you guys on. Uh, how about while we're waiting, just uh, say where you're from. I just would like to know what regions we've covered with this uh, selection of time. It's 6 a.m. here in Brisbane, Australia. Uh, so let me know what uh, country you're from. Just type in um, where you're from. And uh, big shout out to everybody wherever you're listening to. Hey, Karish. Um, okay, Israel, Karish, uh, uh, Fahad's from Pakistan. That's awesome to hear. Uh, Brisbane, Walters from Brisbane. That's awesome. Hey, mate, how you going? Uh, Ravi's UK, Ireland, uh, uh, Broncos country. Another one from um, Brisbane. Awesome. South Africa, US. Uh, Rod has also Rod, try logging back in, please. That should fix the problem. Uh, New York City. Yes. Hello. I haven't been there yet, but it's on my list. Um, Italy, Toronto, Haiti, Canada, Switzerland, Spain, Haiti, Germany. Uh, okay, <laughs> you're confusing me three times, Haiti. Okay, so um, Vietnam, that's great. I was in uh, Thailand just just other just this week, like two days ago. Uh, France, um, Mount Gambier, South Australia. Hey Tim, thanks for waking up early. I'm assuming it's also early there. Uh, South Africa uh, and Haiti, awesome. That's great. Um, by the way, for all of you the, uh, from South Africa, I actually grew up in Zimbabwe, so. Uh, very close, uh, and I've been to South Africa. My favorite city is Sun City there. Um, all right, RSA. Leonard's from RSA. I'm not sure what... Is that Republic of South Africa as well? In that case, we've got a lot of uh, people from South Africa on our webinar. All right, so um, we've got 42 attendees. That's, uh, that's good. And um, so what... Um, what are we going to do? We're going to start off today. I think we're going to um, we're going to start off now. Oh, there we go. Forty-three. Somebody else logged in. All right. So I'm going to assume that everybody who wanted to log in has logged in, and um, uh, I'm going to start off by a with a quick poll. So I've preloaded a couple of polls here. So let's start with um, <laughs> how long have you been trading in the forex market? So there we go. I've loaded it that. I've loaded that, <laughs> and uh, let's start this poll. So, how long have you been trading or learning about forex? Just starting out, under one year. Uprising star, one to two years. Experienced trader, two to five years. Or veteran, five plus years. So let me know. Let's find out what kind of audience we have here. So, um, yeah, it'll be just interesting to see what kind of people uh, are on the webinar. Um, all right. So we've got. Uh, mostly just starting out 60 percent but still results coming in make sure to cast your vote it's only going to be for a couple of minutes and then we'll know a bit more about each other i guess now we know where we are from and uh, in a few seconds we'll find out uh, how much experience we have okay so um assuming that's everybody uh, just starting out under one year in forex trading 58 percent congratulations to all of you and a big shout out uh, you are going through the most exciting I phase of forex, I would say, most complicated and the most uh, um, nerve-wracking. So, um, a big shout out for all the confidence and for all the perseverance that you're putting into this. Uprising stars, a uh, one to two years. That's 19%. That's uh, also a great time in forex when you're slowly understanding what you're, perhaps I would say, what you're not good at. What um, 
what you need to work on uh, the things that you're like um, psychologically, emotionally, or uh, analytically, even what you need to improve. And it's good. It's good when you understand those things and you slowly get in, in the habit. Even if you're trading already profitably, you're, there's still things to work on. All right, experienced trader. That is great to hear. We've got a 6% uh, experienced trader. And um, it's also a great time. That's uh, hopefully when you're slowly transitioning into that phase where you're becoming more and more consistent. Well, it's really bright here. It's because it's sunrise here in um, Brisbane. I might have to close the blinds. And finally, Forex veteran, five plus years. Hello, everybody out there. Um, I've, I've been on Forex since 2007, so that makes it, what, uh, nine years now. Wow. Anyway, so yeah, that's the part where, <laughs> where uh, probably you've uh, lost all kinds of um, emotion towards forex market and it's just basically another activity that you undertake so yeah, big shout out to everybody i'm uh, very happy that we have a good mix here i'm just going to uh, pull this blind down sorry guys hopefully that's better nope one sec a bit of unexpected housekeeping there um yeah so very bright in brisbane not used to it uh in fact uh, um uh, actually got back from my trip to thailand just uh the day before yesterday so this is a bit unexpected anyway um where did we stop so we've got our poll uh in and we know where we are so in regards to today's webinar it's uh, probably going to be more uh, oriented at uh, the people in uh, the uh, starting out section. So uh, it's got some great tips and hacks on uh, the things that you got to um, you got to know probably about uh, setting a stop loss and take profit and things like that. And um, but anybody in the other sections, you're still going to probably learn some new things from there and uh, polish up your old skills. And uh, we're going to have fun along the way anyway. So uh, let's ha let's uh, start with that. Okay. So first things first, I've got to show you a disclaimer. And in order to do that, I've got to um, show you my screen. And I've um, haven't done this in a while. So uh, bear with me until I find this uh, button. Okay. So one second. Um, all right, can you let me know if you see my screen? You should see like a photo of Elon Musk here. Okay, just type into the chat if you can see my screen and um, then I will bring up the disclaimer for this webinar because um, I legally have to show it to you. Okay, awesome. So I'm gonna bring up this disclaimer. This is not gonna take long. Um, basically, Forex Boat is, um, uh, a authorized representative of HLK Group. Uh, that's um, uh, a company, an entity that holds an Australian financial services license. And basically, what this is saying uh, here that anything that I um, provide on uh, this webinar, please uh, take it with a grain of salt and just read through this disclaimer. I'm gonna, I have to queue it up for at least five seconds for you guys to read through it. And if you're gonna have the replay, then just uh, make sure you read through the disclaimer as well. Uh, so. Uh, just everything you hear on this webinar take it with a grain of salt and um, make it's definitely not personal advice i'm not providing any personal advice whatsoever during this webinar all right hopefully we're done with that um today so stop loss and take profit why are they important uh, that's what we're going to start off with and then we'll drill into some strategies for setting your stop loss and uh, also just a uh, shout out on into the um into the chat room if anything goes wrong while i'm presenting i'm observing the chat room so i'll know if uh, something um, stops working all right so why is uh, the stop loss so important i wanted to start with a chart from um the dollar franc so uh, the American dollar Swiss a franc currency pair and here we're going back to uh, This is the daily chart and we're going back all the way to uh, January 2015 so this is January last year and if 
anybody was here. So uh, those of you who are trading Forex for under one year, uh, maybe some of you have also seen this. What happened was uh, the Swiss bank uh, intervened in the Forex market. It unpegged uh, or basically it uh, changed uh, how it observes uh, the uh, Swiss franc in uh, regards to other currencies. And what that caused was this huge, massive drop. So uh, the Swiss franc US dollar currency pair uh, dropped from 1.023 all the way to 0 0.83. As you can imagine, this is uh, a, a huge, massive drop. And uh, not only did traders lose money, uh, but also a lot of uh, companies, a lot of Forex brokers went bankrupt. And the biggest example of that is Alpari uh, UK. Alpari UK um, uh, completely lost uh, its business just because of this one movement, just because of this one day. And uh, that is not the only example in that particular case. So what does this tell us? Well, this tells us that uh, sometimes market movements can be completely unpredictable. So without insider information, uh, which is illegal, by the way, um, you wouldn't have known about this uh, massive drop in um, uh, the US dollar uh, Swiss franc. And so uh, so point one here is that even um, even if you tried closing the order, if you say had a buy order somewhere here, so let me zoom in a little bit. If you had a buy order somewhere over here at the top and um, you, you saw the market going against it, and you even tried closing it, um, manually with your hands you wouldn't be able to because uh, the market is just moving too fast and whenever you try to close at a certain price by the time when you see the price you try to close it and by the time you click the button close in that one second the price has already moved further down by the time you try to close it again the price has moved again so every time you will be getting um uh requotes because the quotes are changing and uh it's changed too much and the terminal will be asking you do you really want do you want to close by the new price you'll be trying to close by the new price and it'll be asking you again and therefore you'll only close your order somewhere over here at the bottom if you have enough money to get there that's number one so that is why it's important to uh, set a stop loss a stop loss is like a level let's say you entered a buy order somewhere here um let's uh, mark these somehow let's say I've got an up arrow, if you can see that. So maybe if I'll, I'll keep it highlighted. Uh, and you uh, went into a buy order somewhere here, but you set stop your stop loss over here. So let's uh, make this a bit thicker. Um, well, at least in that case, uh, there's a chance. It's not a guarantee. So you have to understand this. It's not a guarantee that your order will be closed here, but there's a chance that it'll be closed here. Um, in this specific case, because the market moved so drastically, even stop losses weren't working. Even sometimes traders had stop losses and even brokers weren't able to fulfill them. So um, what was happening, the market was moving too quickly even for a stop loss, which has had been preset to be executed properly. And therefore, um, a lot of traders actually lost a lot of money and there were like stories with uh, traders with i think it was fxcm or forexcom i get them confused sometimes um where traders lost more money they had than they had on their account so and that's the reality of forex you you can actually f lose more money than you have on your account in case of market movements like this and because we are using leverage for trading uh, if the market moves so drastically that even the stop losses don't work and the margin calls don't work, nothing works, none of those safety measures work that the brokers put in place, if that happens, then you can actually lose more money than you have on your account. And you have to be aware of this inherent risk of Forex trading. Now, a lot of traders ask me, like, how often does that happen? How how can we prepare for that? You really, uh, I, I really can't say how often that happens. It uh, just sometimes happens and you have to be prepared for that. So. Uh, make sure to check your terms and conditions with your broker what happens in that case because uh, sometimes brokers chase after that money and it can be a nightmare so um, well the the most you can do probably is uh, to just set stop losses to at least somehow be on the right track to putting in the right safeguard mechanisms for your uh, trading all right so that is uh, what happened back there and you can if you look through the charts you will see um like spikes not as big as that of course but you'll see spikes here and there like here's another one right over here uh, just 
they happen uh, and um hap these ones happen quite often like the small ones so um if the price moves that quickly uh, this is a daily chart so maybe it's it wasn't moving that quickly so uh, you need to look at like uh, five minute uh, time frames and so on to find spikes that are quick like say this was a quick movement you can see here um and in that case the uh, only a stop loss might uh, be able to close the position and um so that's a kind of a good reason why you would uh, want to set stop losses and in fact i i never trade without setting a stop loss uh it is just uh too risky and not worth it by the way if you want to find more of these spikes a good time to look at them for them is every first friday of every month there are kind of some exceptions when um it's moved around but basically what happens is the non-farm uh, and uh, unemployment uh, non-farm payroll and unemployment uh news elements come out for the us and they usually come out on the every first friday of every month and that's when there's a like a rapid movement so personally i don't trade on the first friday of every month because i know that there will likely be some uh, movement like that all right so we figured out why it's important to set a step a stop loss well actually let's just quickly mention take profit as well um why you want to measure, uh, set a take profit well if uh, if the price is moving against you if the price is moving in your favor let's say you had a sell order here then uh, probably you wouldn't want a take profit like the further it goes the better but kind of a take profit is um, because you're in forex like this comes back to what i mentioned earlier that by the time you're like five years in forex five plus years in forex you should lose all the emotions towards trading it should become just a job just something that you do and um uh, you don't want to be like gambling you have to have by then you should already have a trading system or strategy and it should tell you that this is where you said you take profit like it should be said here so let's say here's a good example right so let's say you entered into the market over here i hope you can see this arrow uh, let me uh go into properties let's see if i can make it bigger and make it um Let's, let's make it green, for instance. Um, so let's say you entered into the market here, and then you your strategy tells you that your take profit uh, should be set at, well, let's say at the, the previous high over here, which was over there. So this is where you set your take profit, right? Let's say, um, let's put a green, like, like an aqua arrow. Aqua arrow, yay. Um, anyway. So let's say your strategy tells you this is where your take profit should be set. Well, in this case, if you hadn't set a take profit, then you would have gotten all the way up to here and maybe you close the order here or maybe you close the order here or maybe you close the order. You would have gotten extra pips. But if your strategy is telling you that your take profit should be set here, then you should set your take profit there because psychologically, it's more, it's better to think of it like, Okay, I've gotten the profit that I was supposed to get according to my strategy. And then you will, you shouldn't care about this uh, remaining movement. It shouldn't affect um, your uh, like emotions. You shouldn't think, oh, I should have not set a take profit. I could have gotten more uh, like money out of it and so on. Well, that's the wrong mentality. That is when emotions kick in and that's when you're going to be regretting uh, good decisions and you know um, even especially regretting bad decisions. So if you just act as a robot and you just set your take profit and you're happy with what you get regardless of how the market moves that's good and plus how do you know when like after if you had no take profit and went up to here would you close it there or would you wait a bit more or would you wait a bit more or would you wait a bit more like wh where <laughs> where does this greed stop so uh take profits are good in terms of keeping yourself um under control and uh, like keeping yourself in uh a, in stern hands basically not allowing yourself to uh, be emotional about your trading all right so that's why stop loss and take profit are important let's move on to our next slide four methods to set a stop loss okay so we're going to talk about four ways you can set a stop loss and um, let's get straight into it method number one first you calculate your lots you calculate how much lots you want to put into a trade and then you set your stop loss how does that sound um that is a completely incorrect method it's completely wrong actually before we continue how about we throw in another um uh, another what is it called 
we throw in another poll because I've got another poll prepared for you guys. Um, okay, we're done with that one. All right, reset poll. Um, okay, so the first question is going to be, uh, do you use your stop losses in your trading? So we've talked about stop losses. Let's um, let's run this poll. Be honest. Don't let this webinar affect you. So we're running the polls after the information is provided. Just uh, tell me how it is. Uh, let everybody know and let yourself know. Be honest before in front of yourself. And so if you don't use stop losses, then let us know. And um, you know maybe from today you will uh, change your approach. All right, so we've got uh, we've got 95% to 5%, which is totally fine. Uh, don't uh, worry if you find yourself in the no group. Uh, we're all learning; it's totally okay. And um, you know, there's something that you probably uh, can take away from today in that case. All right, so uh, results are in. We've got 90% use uh, stop losses and 10% don't. Well, um, a big shout out to you guys who uh, said uh, no because it takes confidence after that. After my rattle about uh, stop losses, it takes confidence to admit it. Well, maybe from here uh, you will um, take some some of this information on board and. Uh, see if that can uh, maybe alter somehow your approach to trading. Okay, so there we go. That was uh, stop losses. And um, now we're going to talk about, um, actually, now we're going to, I'm going to ask you while we're on polls, I'm going to ask you another poll. Um, uh, how do you most often set your stop loss? So uh, for those of you uh, who, whoops, uh, for those of you who said that you, um use stop losses um one second i'm just gonna end that one and start again um okay how do you set how do you most often set your stop loss that's the one i wanted all right let's see so how do you most often set your stop loss i use support and resistance levels a set number of pips or points i use an indicator depending on how much I can afford to lose and other. So let us know how you set your stop losses. Um, just select one of these options, five options actually. Uh, we're discussing four strategies. Okay, so what are we seeing here? All right, let's give it a couple more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so the biggest by far, whoa, a lot of people coming in. How many people do we have on the webinar? 54 people. Uh, shout out to everybody. Uh, welcome if you just joined in. Great to see everybody here. Um, okay, so uh, support and resistance levels. Uh, most people use support and resistance levels, 40%. A set number of pips uh, or points, 23%. Uh, I use an indicator that is uh, 16% and depending on how much I can afford to lose another 16% and other 6% really would be curious to uh, find out that other, <laughs> uh, but um, we'll uh, chat about that a bit later. Okay, so um, stop loss and uh, take profit. Uh, I mean, setting stop loss. Let's have a look at how we can set our stop losses. So first way is you can calculate your loss first and then you can set a stop loss. Well, this method is wrong and um, let me explain why I think uh, this method is wrong and why um, personally I wouldn't take this approach. So let's go back to the chart. Um, where is my chart? All right, so what that method is saying is that, all right, so there's a, a trade, let's say, let's go to the end. And let's say I want to hypothetically go into a buy position here, right? So this is my daily chart. Oh, let's change it to an hourly chart. We're intraday traders here. Well, not everybody, <laughs> I'm assuming. But anyway, so let's say uh, I want to enter into a buy position here. Where's my arrow? Oh, there we go. We've got a big, nice big arrow here. So saying that I want to enter into a buy position here, I think the trend is upward and uh, I've got a signal to enter in the buy position. What this method is saying that first a trader using this method would calculate the lot. So when I click new order, uh, by the way, it's a demo account. So uh, when a trader would um, uh, want to enter here, they would be like, okay, so I'm going to say I want to use, um, let's say 0 0.5 lots to enter into this trade. Now, 
I don't know my stop loss and take profit yet, but I know that I want to enter with 0.5 lots. And I know that for this trade, I can only afford to lose, um, let's say $500, right? Uh, then based on those, based on those um, values, the trader would calculate using uh, the formulas, which we discussed um, in my uh, course, which I actually have a screenshot here. So this is, um, this is my course on uh, trading on uh, forex trading, and using this formula, the trader would he knows the lots, he knows the risk, and then he would calculate the stop loss in pips. So once you've calculated the stop loss in pips, then you'd go back, you'd set your stop loss somewhere over here, and then you go in, um, or basically you you wouldn't go back, you would you would select uh, where you want to set your stop loss here, right? So you would visually see it there, and then you would say uh, set your stop loss somewhere over here and you would open a buy order. So that it would look like that. There I've opened a buy order, I've set my stop loss. Everything looks fine, right? So I've thought about it, I've I've got a signal to enter, I've got um, a uh, lot that I'm happy with, 0 0.5, and that together gives, and I've got the risk, I've got the amount of money uh, that I can afford to lose on this trade, so I've calculated my stop loss. So that is an incorrect method. That is, you're working backwards here. Even though it seems logically, uh, you're actually working backwards because you are first thinking about the lots, then about your risk, then about your stop loss. Well, a stop loss should be set tactically. It shouldn't be a, a result of a calculation. What should be the result of your calculation is your lots. And th that is like a fundamental thought there that um, uh, wh why would you select uh, your lots that you're trading with. A lot of traders have this uh, paradigm that uh, that I want to trade 0 0.1 lots on this trade, or I want to trade 0 0.2 lots, or I want to trade 1.3 lots on this trade, or you know my strategy for now I'm a I'm, I'm a beginner trader, so I'm only going to trade 0 0.1 lots on my account for the next three months. But that is not that is the opposite way of you, how you should be approaching it. What what you should be restricting yourself in is the risk that you will be, um, that you can afford to, the amount of money that you can afford to risk in the trade. That is important, yes. Like for this, uh, for the next period, I'm going to be only risking $100 per trade or $50 per trade. And once you uh, know that risk, that that is going to limit your risk. And it has nothing to do with lots. Your lots are a function of how much, where your stop loss is set, how much you can risk, and then you'll calculate your lots, as we saw from that formula. So that's, uh, once again, going back to that Forex Training for Beginners course, I'm sure a lot of you are already enrolled in that course. So um, uh, what what that means is that you, you like, by, do, by doing the correct approach where you're first setting your stop loss, you are allowing yourself the flexibility to set your stop loss ta tactically and use market uh, patterns or indicators or other um, information to find out where to set your stop loss. So this first method is not correct. All right, moving on. Uh, calculate lots first and set stop loss. Wrong. Don't, uh, uh, don't do that approach. Uh, number two, fixed distance stop loss. So this is like... Uh, the one type of stop losses, um, it uh, usually comes to be when uh, traders are using a trading strategy. When, like a very specific trading strategy, uh, or I don't want to say primitive because uh, I personally believe that even like even the simplest trading strategies or primitive trading strategies, uh, like I've, <laughs> I put, I know you can't see me on camera right now, I put floating quotation marks there. Uh, even the most primitive trading strategies can be uh, the most successful one. So it doesn't matter what kind of trading strategy, but if your trading strategy is telling you that every time your stop loss should be 50 pips or um, you know 500 points or whatever it's selling you, then in that case, you could have a fixed distance stop loss. So let's have a look at that. Uh, it's pretty simple, so let me open a new chart here. Uh, dollar yen. All right, so let's say uh, I enter like this. Looks like a downward trend. You know, the price has bounced off this resistance level. Uh, you know, let's see. Let's. It looks like it's in a consolidation. And uh, hypothetically, let's say that I think it's going to uh, move down. I'm going to enter there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say. Um, 
all right, uh, I want to enter into a sell order. So let's put a down arrow here. I want to enter into a sell order and um, then I would calculate, uh, I would find out what my trading strategy is telling me. So let's say I'm entering here. Then my trading strategy would say um, your your stop loss has to be, uh, let's, what is that? That's uh, a thousand points. So by the way, to get this, uh, um, function you just middle click the mouse button and then you'll get the crosshairs if, if you don't know about that so let's say my stop loss is 1200 uh or 1200 uh, points or that's 120 pips if my strategy tells me 120 pips stop loss then regardless of what's going on here i will set the stop loss at 120 pips and then depending on how much i am i can afford to risk where, where's that slide where'd that slide go then depending on how much I can afford to risk, right? I've got my fixed stop loss. I've got my um, uh, risk that I know, and then I would calculate my lots. So uh, often for these strategies, if you've got a fixed risk, a fixed amount that you want to risk, if you're not using any kind of money management strategies, especially if you're a beginner starting out, like tr practicing on a demo account, um, just learning how to trade, then you might not be using a money management strategy that is governing uh, your risk um, and how that's exchanging. So in that case, um, your risk would be fixed because your stop loss in pips is fixed then that means your loss is also fixed and that is actually one of the reasons why a lot of traders from the get-go from the very start they think that lots is the main uh, thing they have to choose because everything is fixed here so they just think okay so i'm going to set 0 0.1 lots uh, every time or whatever so they think that this is where uh, everything originates well actually no it's just because everything is fixed it's the this formula still hold holds you still uh, first find out your stop loss which is fixed then you find out your risk which is fixed then you find out your lots all right so that's a fixed distance stop loss number three support resistance level and that is what um a lot of our um uh, a lot of you guys on the webinar actually said that you already use for uh, your support resistance um guys sorry i'm not watching the chat so I, I can see that you guys are posting stuff there let's uh, do the questions and answers in a couple of minutes so in about 10 minutes we'll get to the q a so just more your most important questions hold on to them and i will see how many we can get through at the end of the webinar all right so support resistance level um uh, support resistance level it's uh, pretty straightforward no it's actually not as straightforward but uh, I, I actually like it it's uh it's very I don't know. It's, it's it kind of it seems very logical to me. All right, so let's up, open up another chart. Australian dollar, US dollar. Big shout out to you, fellow Aussies out there, waking up early for this webinar, six a.m. Well, seven a.m. In, in Sydney. Lucky, lucky. All right. So support and resistance levels. Um, this is one hourly time frame on the Australian dollar, US dollar. Uh, let's say hypothetically, I was going to go into an order here. What would I go? What is, uh, you know, what I don't, I don't trade by gut feel, <laughs> uh, not anymore, but, um, what would my gut feel tell me? Oh, what did I do? What is that? Um, okay. So and I'm going to show another trick here. So if you right click the trend line, uh, first of all, I want to make it bigger. And then if you go into parameters and click Ray, Click OK. It's a ray. It's uh, it's no longer a ray. It's just uh, it has a fixed length. So, whoa, that button when I started Forex 2007, that button took me like probably three months to figure out. It's so much better without that infinity. All right, so that looks like a resistance support line. Uh, what else do we have? Um, if I copy, it looks like a channel, right? So that looks like a channel and. Um, uh, to be honest we don't really trade like i don't uh advocate trading against the trend because this is obviously an upward trend uh you can see that it started over here it's going up um here's going down so i don't advocate trading against the uh, trend uh and uh, like going down here but that like statistically speaking within channels the price most likely most often bounces back into the channel like as you could see here bounced in bounced in here it did break through but then went back in breakthrough back in bounce bounce back in bounced off the middle that also happens bounce bounce so you know qu quite big chance is going to bounce back in um but i'm not making a forecast here 
uh, we're actually going to do the opposite just for the purposes of this demonstration or maybe we'll we'll see how we go we'll we'll start with the example of we're going to go into a buy order because let's say some other signal is telling us that this uh, channel has exhausted itself and the uh, price is going to shoot out and as soon as it shoots out it's going to go like boom up up in up into the sky over there so where would you set your uh, stop loss and take profit well let's see so what are support resistance levels basically there are different types um support levels are levels under the price so some level under the price which if the price gets to it it will bounce off so let's find a support level here separately there's a support level right so the price got to the level bam bounced off bounced off bounced off and went back up right so and funny enough i'm i haven't seen this chart but uh oh, actually this is actually the pretty low the aussie dollar hasn't been that low in a while um all right let's find another one let's find another one um let's say um mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well let's say this one right so the char the price bounced off here well why did it bounce off here well let's go look back over here right so was this ever a significant level you can see that uh not exactly this price but somewhere around here was significant so if i pull this down you can see that here it bounced off then it bounced let me zoom in the price bounced off uh, over here then it bounced off here so here it was a support level bam then went back went through and then became a resistance level so the price can't get through it like resistance resistance then support support and then going here like okay so that's no longer the valid level for here but in in this case that's a good example of how it's the support level uh, over there and this here it could be a psychological level right so if i put the line here um even though there's no like previous indication that there was uh, the price was going to bounce off this level maybe like further back but if you look at the trend line or uh, the horizontal line here you'll see that it's a round number so seven one and then zeros right so uh, psychological levels with round numbers are always or very often support and resistance levels so look out for those as well anyway moving back so let's get rid of those how would we set the stop loss and take profit based on psychological levels here well we would say all right um we're going for an up uh, like we're going for a buy uh, let's zoom in a bit and let's say we want to uh where would we set our levels well it looks like these two pr uh, prices or these two actions bounced off the same level right so let's put a line here and let's see what it is so it's 0 0.69824 right then you would go back and explore has this ever always so been so you can see the price bounced off here bounced off here then there was some uncertainty around this area so also uh meaning that the price is kind of like uh touching this this line or you could pull it down a bit you could be like okay bounced off bounced off bounced off bounced off again didn't reach didn't reach and here it just touched it and here it didn't reach so basically um once again this is an hourly time frame so they might be like a huge number of pips here so that's 2000 pips like uh 2000 points 200 pips um basically it could be a huge stop loss but you know because we have the formula because we know how much we want to risk we know where we want to set the stop loss you just calculate the correct amount of lots that you should go into your trade with and um then you'd be sweet right so you could you could use that as your um um uh, stop loss level and it's a support resistance level that's governing that the other way um is the take profit right so here you can see that this looks like a resistance level the price wasn't able to get through there so what we normally do oh by the way this is part of the strategy part of the uh, the webinar is that see the price can't get through here and so it like bounces off it so uh out of these two levels would you set your stop loss uh, you take profit like higher or lower or exactly at that level and would you set your stop loss higher or lower or exactly at that level well it's kind of logical right so if the price can't get through this level then there's no much point or it's a bit uh it's um <laughs> there's certain ver words i cannot use on this webinar <laughs> because of uh the uh, regulation australian regulation words like uh, secure guaranteed safe and so on so <laughs> i don't want it's just funny i don't want to say it's safer it's not um uh, basically uh statistically because uh, the price can turn around at this level 
right? If you set your take profit here, statistically, it's less likely to be reached than if you set it just below this level. So normally what I would do is I have this um, level and then I would set my uh, stop loss and resistance. Uh, yeah, exactly, Leonard, 10 pips to line, somewhere there. So 10 pips above or 10 pips below the line. So let's put them in yellow. So that's going to be my take profit. So just be below it. Like, you know, you sacrifice a little bit of money, a little bit of pips. So that's, you know, 12 pips you sacrifice there. But statistically speaking, you, and I'm all about statistics or, or data. <laughs> um, statistically speaking, it is more likely to, um, uh, to, the price is more likely to reach that level. And with the stop loss, now let's think about the stop loss. You Do you want to set it a bit higher or a bit lower? Right. If you set a bit higher, uh, so the price is struggling to get through this level, right? This level is like your protection. So why would you set the stop loss here or at the level? You'd set it a bit further, right? You, If the price does go through, then you will lose an extra 12 pips on the stop loss. But statistically, because if you have identified this level correctly, statistically, the price is um, less likely to go through the level than it is to reach it. So maybe this trade-off is worth it. Maybe sacrificing 10 to 12 pips uh, can save you a whole stop loss, right? Maybe maybe it won't. Maybe you never know. But if you that, that's why trading is all about numbers. If you do this in and out and in and out and in and out through you know 100 trades per month, or no, per month, what am I saying? Uh, if you're trading manually, that's pretty hard. Um, let's say 100 trades per, per year or uh, 200 trades per year, then you know the stats add up and uh, eventually um then you just look back and you see did was it a worthwhile trade-off or not uh normally it should be so basically that's how i would set my stop loss and take profit using support and resistance level identify the support resistance and then um set the uh, take profit a bit lower if it's a buy order stop loss a bit lower if it's a reverse situation if it's a sell order obviously uh, you would uh reverse the two, right? You would set your take profit over here at the bottom, but a bit higher, stop loss up here at the top, but a bit higher as well. All right, so it'd be interesting to see how this trade plays out. So, um, and to see specifically if it breaks through the channel, will it reach our take profit or will it turn around before our stop loss? Um, but in this case, we didn't do enough analysis to uh, confidently say that the trade will go through up there. There's a, quite a big chance that it will bounce off and go to the bottom of the channel. So maybe observe that and uh, see how, how it goes in the, uh, the coming days. Okay, so that was a long um, talk about support resistance levels. Uh, we've only got 20 minutes left, so let's move on to number four. Okay, use an indicator. This one's gonna be fun. So example here I've got is uh, average true range indicator um, and that is uh, equivalent of setting a what is called volatility stop loss. So let's go ahead and explore that. Let's open up another chart, Euro British Pound. How about that? These are just random. Um, okay, so let's zoom in. How would I set a volatility stop? Well, there's an indicator here. So if you go into indicators in your navigator, and then you go oscillators and there's average to range. Like you can use pretty much uh, lots of different indicators for this and there are lots of different ways to use it. I'll show you one and it's called the volatility stop loss. So average to range, let's put it in here and let's make the line a bit bigger, wider. There you go. So that is your average to range indicator. What is it telling us? Well, um, the average to range indicator, let's actually, uh, this is a way, a good way to find out about indicators if you, are not sure about them, you just bring up, uh, where is my help topics? Um, there they are. I've got, uh, if you've seen my intro uh, course, my free course on Forex, uh, then um, for, for video series, you'll see that I have three screens and plus I've got a laptop sitting here just observing this webinar. Uh, you'll see that <laughs> these three screens are massive. It's sometimes I get lost. Um, okay, so ATR, right? Uh, wait, oops, ATR here. Average to range. So, and then you just read up on your indicator. So, in this case, um, difference, uh, true range is greatest for following these three values, right? And uh, here, uh, usually, usually it actually even gives you the formulas. But anyway, you can Google those. Uh, so, basically, what the average true range does is it uh, takes um, the, um, 
it takes the difference between the highs and lows in the market. So that's what it's called. That shows volatility in the market. And uh, what it does, it takes the average for the past couple of days. So um, if I click here, the period is 14. So that means, no, not a couple of days, for so past a uh, couple of bars. So let's change that to 24 and make it like uh, per day. So basically what it does is uh, it takes here, this value represents uh, the difference the average between the differences between the high and low for the past 24 bars. So if we take the past 24, there's uh, 24 bars. These 24 bars, if you take all the high minus the low for every bar and then you average it out, you'll get the average true range. That's what that's what this indicator is showing. And basically, why it's called a volatility indicator? Because the uh, greater the volatility, and volatility by volatility here we mean the difference between the high and the low on every single one of your bars. So let's zoom in a bit. Uh, let's say here's a bar, right? So the greater the volatility, the greater this indicator. It is a lagging indicator because, of course, it's taking the average for the past 24 bars. Uh, so as you can see here, like the volatility is low, so this indicator is low. Then the volatility is going up, and then indicator starts picking up. Then you've got uh, high, more volatility, it's picking up, and then right away we've got low volatility, so it's kind of flattening out, so they cancel each other out. Then regardless of the fact that they're going down, volatility is increasing, then it's flattening out here, that's why the indicator is flattening out. But then you've got like some large uh, movements in volatility, so big bars, the indicator goes up, and then up, and then volatility drops off, goes down. So basically, what it means, it's, it's telling you on average, uh, how much do the bars move and how can that help you set your stop loss? Well, if you have an information about volatility, so how much does the market actually move um, um, up and down, that can help you set uh, a stop loss. Um, and um, so how would you use this to set a stop loss? Well, basically you would say, all right, I want my stop loss to, let's say, you're entering a buy order here. We're <laughs> all right. Let's do a sell order. We're all about uh, buy orders today. Let's just say we're entering a sell order here, and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this quick because uh, we want to do some Q and A, right? So um, you say you want to enter a stop loss here. One of the ways you could do it. This is not the only correct way to do it, or even the correct way to do it. It all depends on your strategy. So um, one way you could do it, you could say, so I want my stop loss to be about. Um, let's say, on, in your strategy, regardless of this specific situation, let's say I'm almost supposed to be um, 50 pips, right? And then I will put in a coefficient based on my average true range, right? So I will say, uh, if, if my average true range is um, uh, like is somewhere in this area, then it'll be 50 pips, right? And then, so you create a formula, because I uh, normally put this into expert advisors and that way it's um, it's just all calculated for you. But basically you calculate, you create a formula that uh, if it's 0 0.001, then it's 50 pips. And then, so basically it would be 50 pips divided by, um, give me a second. 50 pips divided by 0, 0, 0 0.001 multiplied by the current average true range, right? So in this case, your, um, your uh, stop loss would be increased by the coefficient of 0 0.0027 divided by 0 .001, uh, 0.001, so by 2.7 times. So it wouldn't be 50 pips, it would be 105 times 735, 135 pips if, if you were entering your order here. Here it would be back to 50 pips. I hope that makes sense, that's a bit, a bit quick, but um, basically it allows you to adjust your stop loss dynamically as the market is more volatile. And basically if you're entering into market in a more, uh, you're entering into a more volatile market, then your stop loss increases proportionally. Of course you'd have some safeguards and you'd say uh, your stop loss cannot be more than 200 pips or something like that, or do not open an order if it's more than 200 pips. And all of that has to be incorporated into your trading strategy. But that's one of the things um, um, uh, traders do. Uh, they uh, look into market volatility and adjust their stop losses accordingly because like if the market is more volatile, you can expect it to move a, a bit more in that period of time and then it'll, it'll, it should subside and uh, become normal again. So, but you don't want to trigger a stop loss while it's more volatile. It's a bit more advanced method, but um, still uh, usable. All right. Let's uh, recap. So we learned today, first of all, that uh, stop loss and take profit are very, very important um, for uh, different reasons, uh, for many reasons, um, but uh, that's good to know.
Also, we learned four strategies of setting the stop loss. Number one, calculate the lot first method, which is wrong. Number two, fixed distance stop loss. Number three, support and resistance level stop loss and take profit. And uh, use indicator, uh, example, the uh, average true range indicator. Okay, uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial and hope you learned uh, something new, maybe brushed up on your knowledge. Wow, we have 55 people, so uh, that is awesome. You guys stuck around for uh, 50 minutes and we have exactly 10 minutes for Q&A. So I'm going to bring up back my, <laughs> I wanted to say lovely, but <laughs> I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna bring up back, uh, back up my face. Um, where is, um, there we go. All right, so bring on the questions and uh, I will bring the answers. Is this webinar recorded so I can watch what I missed? Of course it is, of course it is. And uh, if you have registered, you will get a link. If you have to be able to support at forexboat.com and I will make sure you get an email. Same at my current job. Okay, Steve, it's all recorded. You will uh, get a, a link. Oh, by the way, by the way, so Q&A for eight minutes and then the special thing, uh, remind me of the special thing at the end. Uh, a uh, special um, thing <laughs> I got for you guys. Uh, where can I find webinar number one? Um, that's a good question. It's it's on my YouTube channel. And um, send me an email, uh, Karish. I will I'll give you a link. Thank you so much, uh, Ibrahim. Uh, my pleasure. Um, hiding in one of the closets. <laughs> Sweet. Oh, you're at okay. Steve is at his current job, hiding at in one of the closets. Okay, awesome. Oh yeah. All right, guys. While uh, while you bring in the questions and I bring in the answers, um, I like this question a lot. I'm gonna uh, put in another poll, and um, <laughs> this is just for me. Uh, be honest. Uh, how would you? How would you rate this webinar on a scale from one to five? Five being the best, one being the worst. Um, I'll answer some questions in the meal. Well, <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, the closet one bike, do you right? That's probably, uh, is that for me? Oh, motorbike, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, CBR 600 RR, uh, really, really like it. What do you write, John? Uh, Kirill, do charts use New York time or Australian time, please? Um, Depends. It depends on what broker you're using and uh, what where their servers are located. In this case, it's Axie Trader, um, and Axie Trader uh, is, by the way, um, the favorite broker of Forex <laughs> Um Their servers are using uh, some odd time, so you got to you got to calculate what um, what time is. But that's a good question. So make sure you are aware of what time your uh, broker is using on its servers. Explain the formula for volatility. How many X uh, uh, ATR um, volatility stop loss? Okay, um, how do I explain this? So basically, you have a stop loss that you like, right? And then you find out the volatility level that you're most comfortable with when with this particular stop loss. Let's say the volatility level for argument purposes is 0 0.5. Then you say um, if the volatility level increases, I want to increase my stop loss, right? So you take your stop loss, you multiply it by uh, the current ATR level, and then you divide it by your comfortable uh, volatility level of ATR 0 0.5 that you selected. So basically, you got a, a changing element there. I know it's not the best explanation. Have Google that, please, because it would take a bit more time to explain. And uh, there are lots of uh, other ways as well that you can uh, use this um, ATR um, formula or approach. Hey, Street Ninja XR636, nice, nice. Uh, give me a shout if you're in Brisbane, John will go for a ride. Uh, Steve, uh, do you have any US friendly recommended brokers? I think Axie Trader. So I know I unfortunately do not. Um, uh, that is a, a major uh, question. Unfortunately, I can't help you at the moment with that. I'm really working on that. If uh, at some point I'll be able to find one, I will let you know. Sorry about that, Steve. Rod, thank you, thank you, Rod. Can I hire you as a freelancer to call my strategy? No, unfortunately, cannot get too many of these requests. Which currency do you recommend to trade for beginners? I can't it all depends on your um, personal situation, circumstances, and financial needs, as I'm supposed to say. So it also it all depends on exactly where you are and what your preferences are and things like that. So I really can't make the recommendations. Sorry, Vivek. Um, would you give some setups uh, to use for forex trading? Once again, no, because um, uh, 
legal reasons, I would not give some uh, recommendations and advice. I can only give you like overview of Forex market, my understanding, some, you know, like guidance in uh, trading. I can't say, uh, Ibrahim, you should use this or Steve, you should use that. You guys have to decide for that for yourself, unfortunately. So uh, come to Forex Boat for guidance, come to Forex Boat for um, information, for inspiration, for you know, learning and being in this great community that we're building here. But unfortunately, I can't give you the golden key to Forex because I don't have it. Um, uh, okay, okay. Are you going to do a webinar and discuss some robots, how it works and what formula or do what? We'll do one day. I'm actually, I actually really like these webinars. I wanted to keep this one 45 minutes, but it did go on through an hour and um, it's still great. I, I really like doing this. So once six, every six months is not not really cool. So I'm gonna try to do them more often. I wanna say monthly, but I'm not gonna promise anything. I will try and we'll see how we go. Uh, do you have a calculator to check my half Kelly calculations? Uh, whoa, that's a, that's a good, great question. Uh, no, I unfortunately I don't have a calculator, but I'm sure there are lots available online. Can you send the link for the first webinar to all of us, please? Yeah, okay, I'll I'll write that down. I'll put that in. Um, send a link to first webinar. I might add it into a newsletter or something. Um, all right. Uh, thank you so much. Anyway, let's have a look at the poll. I'm curious. Okay. Uh, five out of five, 45 percent, four out of five, 42 percent, three out of five, 12 percent, and the rest of the reserves. Awesome. Thank you guys. That is awesome to hear that you enjoyed this webinar. Really, really excited about that. Uh, yes, more webinars. That's awesome. Um, the, the first method to calculate a stop loss is also wrong for it. Yes, it's also wrong regardless of whether you're using expert advisors or not. Make uh, courses uh, about creating robots. Uh, robust for uh, 2016 and more webinars. All right, great. Uh, so uh, we've got a couple of minutes left. Uh, the awesome thing that I uh, wanted to share with you is our um, broker, our favorite broker, uh, which I like uh, and I recommend to uh, my students on uh, Forex Boat. Axie Trader have um, uh, come up with a great uh, promotion. So uh, basically, they enjoy as you know Axie trader are all about building long-term relationships with customers not it's fi finally like i am confident to say that this is not a broker that um you know is just just there just to to get your money and uh you never know how that's going to work out these guys actually want to build relationships and um what uh, they've come up with is they want to find the most active people on forex boat and uh, you know see how we can how they can work together with you guys uh and um one of the ways is um to find active people is people who come to webinars right so you guys made the effort to come here actually sit through this hour uh or at least watch the recording so um what actually trader are going to do is uh in the next couple of days uh, they will have an offer where uh, basically they will match. I can't say the amounts. I can't promise you the amounts. They're uh, still working on how much the maximum is going to be. But uh, basically, when you deposit onto your account, they will match that up to a certain amount. So that is a great way to get started for traders. And um, yeah, so once that offer is ready, everybody who register to this webinar, so even if you're recording, you will get this as well. I will send out an invitation for you guys on behalf of Axie Trader to uh, consider this offer. Once again, you don't have to take it. It's not necessarily, but there will be a time limit. Uh, I think it will be available only until the end of the month. So they're still testing this out. As you can imagine, it's a big expense for the company to um, subsidize uh, your trading for you and um, allow you to trade with more money. Um, like putting money on your account. So basically, I'll send that out, have a look at that, and uh, if you are just starting out, by the way, this offer will unfortunately only be available to new customers of Axie Trader. You have an account with them, not at this stage. Uh, like they wanna see how this this uh, offer goes and uh, maybe, maybe in the future uh, that might change. But if you're just starting out, um, if you haven't got an account with Axie Trader, this might be something worth considering. So I'll send that out in the, the next couple of days. Uh, Axie Trader said they'd get back to me um, by Friday. By the way, Tim, if you're watching this, hi. <laughs> um, and then uh, I'll send it out to you guys for your consideration. 
other than that, it was a great fun uh, webinar. Thank you again for coming. Thank you again for all your questions and uh, for your attention and for being such awesome uh, people. Forexbot has got a lot coming this year. You will be surprised. We're going to change the website. We're going to, I don't want to promise all of these things right now, but I know they're coming. We're going to have a great community and stick around. I will see you. Um, see you on the next webinar. I got a feeling it'll be a pretty soon. All right. So take care and I'll see you around. Cheers.